Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rainy and today we're making enchiladas. Now, past Rainy was thinking about future Rainy when I put chicken in the crock pot just for this. Put a pound of chicken and a small container of salsa in the crock pot and covered it with water and put it on low for eight hours. After that, just go ahead and shred the chicken. My favorite way to do this is in a mixer, but if you don't have a mixer, you can do two forks, no big deal. You do you. This is just a lot easier. Next up, we've got our ingredients. I'm gonna do a half of a white onion, and then I'm gonna do paprika. We have milk, we have green chilies, some cheese, sour cream, and some tortillas. Adding to the list of things to chop, a bell pepper and a jalapeno. So get started by chopping the onion, and I'm gonna do this into small dices. I'm gonna go ahead and dice the onion, the bell pepper, and the jalapeno, kinda all at one time so that they're just ready to go. In this avocado oil, whatever, um, in a large pot, I like to use a Dutch oven no matter what I'm doing. Um, it's on medium high heat and I'm gonna toss in my chopped onions and bell peppers and just let those saute for about two to three minutes until they're translucent and ready to go. I'm also chopping a jalapeno pepper. Ooh, and my finger. <laughs> I'm gonna take the seeds out of this jalapeno pepper and I'm going to chop it pretty small as well. I'm not a chef, so don't judge my knife skills. Come at me, knife skill talks. Add those jalapenos to the um, sauteed um, onions and bell peppers, and then just give it a stir. And I like to turn this heat down to a little bit lower just to make sure they stay warm, but they're not overcooking because you really just want them to be translucent about two minutes and then kind of move on. While those peppers and onions saute, I added two tablespoons of butter to a skillet, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of flour. And what we're doing here is we're making something called a roux, which is basically just when you add a fat and flour together, and you're just doing, you're doing that so it'll like make a thicker sauce. Once you've melted the butter and the flour together and you keep stirring it, a whisk works best, but we just moved and I don't have a whisk, so I'm using a spoon. But go ahead and add about one cup of milk. Do it kind of slowly, so you want to make sure you incorporate the milk slowly with the roux, and that just kind of helps create the base of the sauce. We're going to add a teaspoon of paprika. A little pepper. A little salt and give it a stir. And it creates that pretty color. Leave it to full. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 because I forgot. Now that we've got this pretty consistent texture, I'm gonna do one and a half cups of cheese. It's a lot of cheese, guys. You just gotta go with it. You're making enchiladas. So we're gonna add that cheese. Now, next we're adding sour cream. When you add something cold to something hot, you have to do it kind of slowly. So you're just creating kind of a, a thick sauce, okay? I'm adding a cup of sour cream and I'm just gonna stir it. And again, this is on low heat because I don't want it to actually cook. I really just want it to be like a creamy melted um, deliciousness. I'm gonna come over here and give my vegetables a stir. I'm getting a little worried about their time on the stove, and I'm going to actually turn them off. All right, add a can of diced chilies to the cheese mixture. Give it a stir and let it sit on the heat to stay warm. Moving on to the vegetable mixture, we're now going to take our onions, bell peppers, and jalapenos that have been sauteing, and we're going to add our shredded chicken. So remember, we've already prepared this shredded chicken. It's ready to go. It just needs to be added in. Give it a stir to make sure everything's combined. And then we are about ready to assemble our enchiladas. You want your tortillas to be soft. You don't want them to be crunchy because you're gonna wrap them and roll them. And so if they're crunchy, they will just break. We don't want that. So I've taken two wet paper towels and I have wrapped the tortillas in them and microwaved it for 30 seconds. And you can see they're just kind of like flimsy. All right. So now we have our casserole dish and you can use any kind that you need to. And I'm gonna put some oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and take some of the cheese sauce and put it in the bottom first. And you just wanna spread it out so it's just a small, thin, even layer. I like to 
put a little bit of the cheese sauce as the bottom part of the enchilada because it helps the meat stick a little bit better and then top it with some of your meat topping and then just roll it up fold the edges over each other like that and put it seam side down into the cheese mixture that's at the base and then you keep repeating until you run out of tortillas or salsa or whatever comes first six and sometimes they break open as you can see it's fine because you're gonna eat them no one's gonna know we're also gonna take it and I have leftover chicken mixture and you can make more enchiladas this is a good time when I would make keep going and make a second dish and put one in the freezer um, but I'm not gonna do that today I'm just gonna pour this mixture on top and then top it with the cheese and then bake in the oven now that they're assembled, we're ready to put the cheese mixture on top and I just like to pour it over the top and then kind of take a spatula or a spoon, whatever you're using, and spread it evenly over the top so it'll bake more evenly. And if you remember, we've preheated the oven to 350 and we're going to bake this particular mixture for about 20 minutes or until it's all melted together. Um, it's already cooked so you don't have to be overly cautious about this. You just want to make sure you have enough time for everything to heat through. Add some extra cheese because why not? And after 20 minutes, we're ready to eat. So I would do cilantro, tomato. Um, extra jalapeno if you wanted today I have tomato and avocado I'm out of cilantro and then I'm also gonna add some extra sour cream thanks for watching that's it for today if you make this recipe let me know what you think in the comments